Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking all about makeup and all things beauty. And sometimes we get chatty with it. And this is going to be a long chatty video because we are trying out new makeup and I'm catching you guys up on some recent beauty drama. I know, I thought we left drama behind, but the people over on TikTok, they're getting into it, child. They are bringing back the old 2016 to 2018 beauty YouTube, and it's lighthearted drama that we're gonna chat about. So, if you wanna see me create this look with some new products, including a new palette, from Tarte, this is the Sweet Tarte Cravens palette. She cute. I also have a new foundation, the Juvia's Place foundation. This is the I Am Magic Natural Radiance foundation. Also have the powder. This is the I Am Magic powder foundation. I am also trying this new primer from Dior, the new concealer from Urban Decay, the Quickie, and yeah, quite a few new products. We have a blush from Too Faced. We have contour products from Tarte and Flower Beauty. It's a whole lot going on in this video. So if you wanna catch up with me, chat about some drama in the beauty space and try out a bunch of new products, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right guys, so as usual, we're starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. I already filled in my eyebrows and I also applied my eyeshadow primer. So I used my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion and my MAC Paint Pot. And guys, guys, take it in. I got a tan and I haven't really put on foundation yet. So I don't know if I'm going to find a match in one of the foundations that I recently picked up. Well, I'm gonna use this one today from Juvia's Place. I just picked this up yesterday. So this is the, where is the box? Cause I gotta read it, right? We're gonna do eyeshadow and all that, but this is the foundation that we're gonna use. This is the I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. It's a 40 milliliter bottle, so it contains 30% more than the average foundation on the market. Well, it actually seems like 35% more because it says it's 1.35 ounce. So, hmm, but it's 30% because it's 40 milliliters, so it's 10 to, it's 30%. Either way, let's carry on. It's made in Italy and has an intended usage life of 24 months, which is pretty good for a liquid product. Hmm, and I'm surprised that this is no longer made in the PRC. Hmm, good stuff. It also has fragrance in it. Let me tell you that straight up. There is fragrance pretty high up in the ingredient list. We also have dimethicone, water, some cones and water. So it seems to be silicone based. I'm gonna say, I don't know how formulations work, but if they have cones pretty high up, doesn't that mean it's silicone based? Or is it water-based because water is the first ingredient? But isn't water like the first ingredient in most liquid foundations? I don't know, but it's water and silicones. And the shade I picked up is Cameroon. Now let me read the description because this is key, all right? It's an easy glide foundation for a flawlessly radiant luminous complexion. Not looking forward to that. Both lightweight and long wear this wait what that don't even who is writing this who who y'all got writing this foolishness both lightweight and long wear it should say long wearing this weightless water resistant formula is made with a cerola cherries and rich in vitamins A and C this formula comes in a variety of shades with buildable medium coverage that will leave the skin hydrated with a natural glow. There is no paraben oil or cyclopentaxane. I don't know what that is. 
So, all right, we're gonna use this. But like I was saying, there is fragrance in this like crazy. And I heard it mentioned before, but I like fragrance in my cosmetics, whether it's makeup or skincare, I love fragrance. But it has to be a light fragrance and a pleasant fragrance. It can't be overwhelming. Like Huda Beauty tends to overdo it, but I don't even mind Huda that much. But this fragrance is strong. And I was checking to see how high fragrance is in the ingredient list and it's pretty high up child. And they also have like sunflower seed oil. So there are oils in here, but then wait, wait, it says it's oil free. So how's it oil free when it has sunflower seed oil? That don't make no sense. It also has rosemary leaf extract and that bitter cherry fruit extract. Okay, so this is what we're gonna use for, as foundation. I picked up the shade Cameroon, which is not necessarily the shade I would go for in their other foundations. This is shade 305. The numbers are a little bit screwy too because the higher the number, the lighter the shade, the lower the number, the darker the shade. It was kind of interesting to go in and check it out in Ulta. I was like, I don't know, like I didn't know where to go and then they didn't really have testers. So it's like, I'm just gauging it by eye. So the shade I picked up is Cameroon, which I think is gonna be slightly too deep, but we're gonna work around that, all right? I said all that to not even apply the foundation right away. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start out with this primer from Dior that I picked up because I was curious. I love Dior complexion products. So I was like, all right, let me check it out. So this is the Forever Velvet Veil. It is a 24 hour blur and matte primer. They also have the glow version of this, but I picked up the matte because obviously I have oily skin. So I'm a need. Okay, the matte version. It has a beigey tint to it. I'm looking for a brush to apply this. Ooh, 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 I have a skincare brush. All right, let me use this. So it looks like that. It's a little bit runny and beige. So I'm gonna apply that with a skincare brush. This is from Sephora. I really don't like getting my hands messy with makeup at all I don't like applying anything <laughs> with my hands it's just a thing about me it's not I wouldn't call it like an OCD thing it's just I don't like the feeling of things on my hands especially on my fingers like under my nails so I don't eat a lot of foods with my hands like french fries and chicken wings no I eat everything with a fork I really hate using my hands to eat food I know I know it's like a thing right and that doesn't mesh with my Indian or South Asian heritage because Indians eat a lot of their food with their hands so like what am I doing and then the other half is Nigerian and don't they eat a lot of food with their hands too I'm just a fraud right I am a extreme fraud but I don't like things all over my hands so I'm just applying that with my you know what let me let, let me put a little bit on my fingertip and apply it to my nose. I'm gonna do that. I'll do that much. But how are you guys doing? Oh my God. So I am officially the Bake 4 O, and I'm low key kinda excited cause now I can finally say I'm 40 instead of being like, oh, I'm 37, I'm 38, I'm 39. Like those years are like, they're like on the cusp they're on the cusp and I can finally be like, <laughs> I am 40 and fabulous. So I am 40 guys. Oh my God. My birthday was on the 16th of January and I was away. Okay. I was away on vacation. I was away for 12 days between travel and actual vacation. But you guys may not have noticed that I was absent for that long because I happened to pre-film and schedule videos to go live. So I actually accomplished something that I would never normally accomplish under the circumstances. I was very proud of myself for that, that I had videos like set and ready to go. So proud of myself, but yeah, the 10, I said I got a 10, right? So I was in Thailand, in case you're curious. Let me see, can you see the tan line? Ooh, look at my little tan line. So I did get a ton of sun, even though I was wearing sunscreen and like, you know, my hat and everything. I still got some sun and I'm very happy about it because I did feel like I wanted to get some, some color, you know? I want the melanin to come out and participate. So I'm happy I got some sun. But I had an awesome trip. It was very hectic though. And let me tell you, 
Let me tell you something about jet lag. It is serious. I've been back a week now and I'm still struggling to like recover. I did film a lot while I was away and not in the way that was intrusive to my vacation. It's just like if I went to a certain area, I would take shots of it just because I wanted it for future reference to to like remember the trip. But it wasn't like, oh my God, I have to capture everything on camera. Like I have to set up these shots. No, I was just taking shots where it made sense and I just used my phone. I took my vlogging camera with me and I didn't even pull it out once. I just used my phone and that was all good. So I will be doing a vlog. I will talk you through it. I didn't talk during the filming, but I will just talk you through it, like do a voiceover so I can show you all the beautiful sights in Thailand. Oh my God. So I went to Bangkok and Phuket and then I also did the tours of the different islands gorgeous okay loved it um but the travel like i said jet lag is a bitch it's been a week and my sleep schedule is still all over the place i'm still waking up at like 5 a.m like huh what what's going on and i'm falling asleep at like six o'clock in the evening like i listen i haven't fully recovered it's a 12 hour time difference which was actually helpful to know what time it was back home. So if it was like 6 p.m. where I was in Thailand, I knew it was 6 a.m. back home here in Florida. So that was helpful actually, <laughs> you know? But yeah, it was a good time and I'm gonna fill you guys in on all that. And I do have a haul to share with you guys. A lot of these products that I'm going to be using, I'm going to try to use all new products because I did, yeah, I did go ham and pick up quite a few new makeup products because I was treating myself. It's my birthday month, so like I'm getting things right and treating myself. So I grabbed the Sweet Tart Cravens palette from the Sugar Rush line under Tarte. So they have this like, daughter brand i wouldn't consider it a sister brand but they have this other brand under tart that's called sugar rush it's like the younger sister version of tart and their palettes even though they look similar like the layout and everything may be similar they are a lower price point so this is the sweet tart eyeshadow palette and that's so cute right sweet tart cravens like sweetheart you know like isn't that cute for valentine's day so the palette looks like so. I will show you the swatches right now so you can see them. It is a nine pan eyeshadow palette with eyeshadows in the shape of little chocolates. So it's like getting a little box of chocolates for Valentine's Day, but instead it's eyeshadow and I think it's so adorable. Most of the shades are deeper, richer tones. There aren't a ton of light shades. We do have one light matte and one light shimmer but the majority of the shades are a deeper, richer tone, which I appreciate because that means it's gonna work better on my skin tone. So let me zoom, zoom you in. I think I wanna do something pretty simple. I'm about to go over to my mom's house. I wasn't here for my birthday, so we're going over to just hang out, eat some food, and play some board games, which is great for family time, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Let me go ahead and grab these shades. All right, I'm gonna start out with this caramel shade. This is Drizzle. Even on my complexion, this looks like it might be a little bit rich. Hmm. Mmm, and it does smell like that signature Tarte Vanilla. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that the Tarte eyeshadows do have a slight vanilla scent to them because they do have, let me double check the ingredient list. No, it's fragrance. Before they had vanilla powder that would give it that scent, but now it's just fragrance. And I, again, like a good scented makeup product, so I am happy with that. That color is beautiful and it's not as rich as I initially expected. It does blend out to a nice wash of color. So don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. I know I heard Khaki from Khaki Reviews Makeup. Is that what her channel name is? I watched a new releases purchase or pass type of video from her and she mentioned that she wasn't interested in this palette because the shades just look too rich for her and I'm like, that's that's new, right? <laughs> Usually I'm the one saying, oh, that palette just has ashy light shades. And for someone of a lighter skin tone to say a palette looks too deep and too rich was interesting to hear. But 
I think it's perfect for me, so I'm gonna enjoy it, right? Let me pull a little bit of that color on the outer lid as well. I'm not trying to do anything too crazy. I probably might even wash this off before I go to my mom's house. I don't know, we'll see. What time is it now? It is almost three o'clock and we're going over there later. So we'll see how I feel. I just wanted to get ready with you guys and show you some new stuff that I picked up. All right, now I'm gonna grab ganache so let me just pop that out here so yeah how are you guys doing what's going on a lot of mercy <laughs> so i would normally probably do a car chat to cover this topic but since we're here let's chat about it have you guys caught up with the newest beauty drama on tiktok I'm not on TikTok. I don't watch TikTok. I could care less. Anything that I learn from TikTok or see is on Instagram or on Twitter. Twitter mainly, which is why I love Twitter because it keeps me abreast, child. It keeps me informed of what's going on in the beauty space. And I just love the people that I follow over there. So it's always a good time. So if you guys aren't aware, Michaela, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, so I'm not even gonna try, but Michaela from TikTok. You know that really large influencer on TikTok with the Boston accent? The very contrived Bostonian accent? Yeah, she like goes ham with that accent. And I'm not saying it's not her accent, I just feel like it's a little bit exaggerated for content because let's face it, if you find like something that makes you unique in this space, it's great to monopolize on it because people are gonna gravitate to that uniqueness, you know? So having a really strong accent, it's gonna drive people to watch her. And it seems that she is very charismatic and people are drawn to her personality. So she has really blown up and she's seen success because of it. So, you know, good for her. She's also pretty young. I think she's 24-ish. I think that's what I heard. And again, this is information I'm just gathering from other sources that are not me because I'm not gonna look it up because I don't care that much, okay? I really am not that invested. Listen, I am too old for this foolishness. So next shade we're gonna go in with is semi-sweet which is this shade here. It's a deep like reddish brown. Do you guys say semi or semi? Like semi-sweet or semi-sweet? I usually would say semi, but anyway, let's go in with semi-sweet or semi-sweet, however you pronounce it. But yeah, so Michaela did a video on TikTok featuring a L'Oreal mascara. It was obviously an ad. She had L'Oreal partner for just a couple of seconds in tiny print on the side of the video. Like I saw the actual video. She had L'Oreal partner popped up and it's a way to get around saying sponsored or ad, you know? You get around it by saying partner and I've never understood why influencers are so afraid to say, well, you know what? No, I understand why. People are less, likely to engage with your content if it says sponsored or if it says that it's an ad. You can see that on any platform. If you label your video as ad, it's just automatically going to get less views. People are less likely to watch it. People don't wanna engage with sponsored content, which doesn't make sense to me. If you support a creator, then them doing sponsored content should not affect your viewership like you should be supporting them through and through because you guys got them that sponsored content so you should be like supporting it but i get it all right i personally skip a lot of the ad spiel if it's at the start of a video i know it's gonna be like a minute in so i skip along if i'm not interested in like the product like raw beauty christy Almost every video that she does on her channel is a sponsorship with HelloFresh, right? I know it's coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just skip along, right? But I'm still going to watch the video and I'm still happy that she's getting sponsorships. I'm just gonna skip ahead because it's HelloFresh, I know what's up. 
and you know it's not a big deal to me especially if there's an ad placement rather than a full video being dedicated to the sponsorship like i'm gonna check it out you know but so she did this sponsored video on TikTok, and to me that's not a big deal you know sponsored videos happen but the problem is you need to disclose it and even though she did technically disclose it it was very like hidden like she was trying to avoid disclosing it she didn't mention in the actual video like verbally that it was a sponsored video but we all know it's a sponsored video right all right which shade shall we go in with next hmm i am feeling like you know what let's do truffle which is this light like vanilla shade it's a matte shade and i'm gonna go in with a shader brush so she did this video right showcasing this mascara from l'oreal she stitched the video is that what the cool kids call it stitching so she had somebody else's video play initially just like a second or so of them demonstrating the mascara and showing their results so she was like oh my god i'm gonna you know demonstrate it for you guys too like i can't believe it gives you false lash effects and i'm like i see where this is going because the very first shot of michaela in the video right she's showing one side without mascara one side with but you can tell like from the onset that she's wearing lashes on that side i'm like oh she's wearing lashes and then she proceeds to apply the mascara on the nun mascara side. Oh, look how I'm applying it. Ooh, look at the length that I'm getting. Look at the volume. Oh my God. And then she cuts away after one coat. She's like, oh, this is one coat. Then she cuts away and comes back saying that, oh, she applied multiple coats now. And here are the results with an obvious added lash. Like what and if you don't have the eye for makeup then maybe you wouldn't be able to tell it's a lash because it looks like she either put one of those demi lashes on from ardell which is what everybody's saying which are really light natural looking lashes with a clear band so it's not obvious that they're lashes and i love a good demi wispy from ardell right but if you are a makeup wearer, if you wear lashes all the time, then you can tell that she's wearing lashes because all of a sudden her lashes went to full on volume and length. And even though it looks like natural, like it's a very subtle lash, it's still obvious it's a lash, right? Or she used inserts. So the individual lashes that you can pop on just to make your lashes look a little bit more full, those look also very subtle, very natural. And the kicker is there's a video of Michaela talking about how advertisers will use lash inserts to fake the results for a mascara and she showed you how to do it with those little inserts and i'm like so you were telling people that mascara ads and makeup companies do this and you were showing them how they do it all for you to come around full circle and do it yourself now to fake the results of this mascara in your own sponsored video which is technically an ad and i'm like <laughs> is she serious and kathleen lights called her out on i think her instagram reels i don't follow kathleen lights after that whole n-word situation with jacqueline hill i was just over her but i really did like kathleen lights back in the day i don't think she's a terrible terrible person i'm just turned off by people so i haven't continued to watch her but i'm sure she's learned and grown and all that whatever i'm not getting into that but kathleen lights like did an instagram reel or story and she mentioned like the deception and she's like she didn't mention michaela by name but she was like how do you apply mascara then pop on lashes and say that the results were from the mascara and michaela specifically in the video said that she's not wearing falsies and i'm like why are you lying why are you lying and that's exactly what kathleen lights was saying by the way kathleen lights she's aging so well she still looks like she did 10 years ago this girl what she's a grown-ass woman still looking young as ever so good for her 
But she mentioned it, right? And I got wind of it because Jen loves, which I guess it's kind of weird to rename her channel. Like, what's she gonna say? She's Jen? No, she's Jen loves. So Jen reposted this on Twitter and that's how I saw it. So Jen posted it saying that, you know, it's, it's deceptive marketing. It's not cool. Like other content creators are affected by this because if you're faking it, then it looks bad for everybody. And it's against the FTC guidelines. Like, come on there are rules out there it's not really enforced that well some people have been fine but the FTC guidelines are there like you have to fully disclose when you're doing an ad and you have to be like honest right so here she goes faking her results with these falsies and it's making everybody look bad and she's saying she's not wearing false. everybody knows it's a lie anyway let me see which which other shade am I going with this one is dipped. It's like a chocolatey bronze. I love a chocolatey bronze. Like, come on, right? So, Jen called it out. I saw it from Jen, and Jen reposted the Kathleen Lights video, and I think she also posted the Michaela video, and I was like, let me see what's going on, right? So, I'm just like, ooh, Mascara Gate is underway because I don't want to say it's necessarily like some frivolous drama, but I just spit a lot, okay? <laughs> oh my god. But it's like a more lightweight drama. It's a very lightweight situation. It is not the end of the world. It is serious, but it's also not that serious. It's not that detrimental. Like, it's not that big a deal. And it reminded me of 2016, 2017, 2018 drama. It's not that heavy. Like, it's not pedophilia and grooming and... You know what I'm saying? It's not predatory. None of that. It's just like, ooh, you're not mentioning that you're sponsored. Ooh, you're lying for views, like stuff like that. Ooh, you know, just simple, lighter weight drama. Still, still something on the serious side because it's breaking FTC guidelines and it does make everybody in the community kind of look bad, but it's not that serious at the same time, you know? So I'm just over here like, ooh, chow! And people are defending Michaela. People are like lashing out at her. Some people are saying it's not that serious. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not that serious. But at the same time, like we should be commenting on it and calling it out because we don't want just a recurrence, right? We've already seen this. We've been through this on YouTube. This eyeshadow is so cute. It is applying so well. I love it. And it's not like too intense and frosty, which I appreciate. It's not flaky. These feel like almost baked eyeshadows, which I appreciate and dampening them will help a lot. Y'all want me to finger this eyeshadow? I'm gonna sacrifice for you guys. I mentioned I don't like putting things on my finger, but I'm gonna do it for you guys and just press this eyeshadow all over my lid to see the difference. It intensifies it just a bit, but not too much. If you're into subtle shimmer, like I am, then this might be a great palette for you guys to pick up. You know what? I wanna, do I want to? Let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up this other shade. So this one is rich. It's like a bronzy, it's like an orangey, coppery bronze almost. Let me pick it up and just pop it. Ooh, yons, yons. That's pretty. That is really pretty. It looks a little bit red in the pan, but it applies, well, it kind of applies like a rusty coppery shade, I would say. Yeah, it has some red to it for sure. That's pretty actually. It's a little bit too bright. It's a little bit too bright for me. Let me tame it a little bit with the brush. So what was I saying? Done lost my train of thought. Oh my God. Yes, yeah, so we saw this happen on YouTube. We've been through this. We don't want the new generation to come along and, and repeat the same nonsense, right? The large influencers blow up. They start faking it for sponsorships and for money, right? And they start flaunting their wealth start lying to consumers and viewers and it's a whole situation and we don't want 
to repeat that mess, right? The FTC literally made those rules later in the game in part because of what was happening on YouTube with the undisclosed sponsorships, right? And Hair for the Tea was one of the first ones to start calling it out. Rest in peace, girl, because it is happening again. And the viewers now on TikTok are realizing, hey, these people aren't as honest as we thought. And it's like, oh, you thought they were your friend. <laughs> funny yeah they start out as relatable and you're like oh my god they're wearing makeup and they're telling me about their day and their lives and this is so relatable they're me they're like the girl next door the girl down the street that i could be friends with and it's like no they're not you know what hold up come back in come back in because i have the mascara that she was talking about so this is the l'oreal telescopic lift was that backwards right now when I showed you? No, it wasn't backwards. So it's the telescopic lift and it has an interesting brush. It is a flat plastic paddle style brush. It has like comb type bristles that are kind of far apart and there are instructions on how to use this. So let me read the instructions, which Michaela was sure to point out in her video. Oh, what a box there. It's not one box. It's the little, you know, the little packaging. So it says, step one, lift and load your lashes using the front hook bristles. So the front hook bristles are, oh, the one that's at the front. These are the front hook bristles, the top part up there, so at the front. And then step two, use the side hook comb to separate. So over upon the side. So over upon the side, we'll have some comb bristles we're gonna use. So okay, front first and then side. Okay, let's let's see. Let's try this out. I got it in the shade Blackest Black. They have it in regular black and also in, I think, brown. And L'Oreal mascaras have always been great. Like, come on. Carbon black? Excellent mascara. All their mascaras have really been great, the ones I've tried out. The only one I didn't like was just the telescopic that has that really tiny brush. It didn't really work for me. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, top first, right? Front. So them said load up the lash with the front. Comb it through. So yeah, they've always had great mascaras. And what I like about them too is that they provide different shades. So they have black, regular black, if you're just going for a softer natural black look. They have blackest black, which is a rich black. And then they have brown. They also have the waterproof version. This one is called the washable version, which is interesting. It's like they're differentiating it from the waterproof one. And anytime I go on vacation and I need a waterproof mascara, I just grab one from L'Oreal. The drugstore is great to get mascara from. I'm telling you, they always have great formulations at a decent price, but the price point child, is going up because I think this mascara was like $15. Yeah, it was like $14.99 and I didn't have a coupon at Ulta. So yeah, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap at all. And here's the thing, I have pretty decent lashes. Like I don't have struggle lashes. So me applying mascara may not tell you how this would apply on you if you have struggle lashes, all right? Manage your expectations based on the lashes you have. I have pretty decent lashes that respond well to mascara. And this is definitely a rich black mascara. It's layering up really well. It's given me volume. I wouldn't say it's given me much length though. This is about the length of my lashes with mascara. This is definitely not giving me the MAC mascara. You know which MAC mascara I'm talking about. Which one is it? Hold on. The MAC stack. <laughs> that mascara that I demonstrated before that I fell in love with, that gives length and volume. This is definitely giving me volume, but because it has a comb type brush, the lashes are sticking together where the comb is not really separating them because the teeth are pretty wide apart. So it's like, it's combing them through, but then they are clumping together, which is what was shown in Michaela's video initially, which is why I was like, I know that final cut that she showed was not that mascara because the lashes were doing this, which is clumping together, 
which I don't mind so much because I'll just grab a lash comb and I'll just go through them. You can also grab like a spoolie or like a lash brush. We have tons of lash brushes out there on the market. So I would just separate the lashes myself. Not that big a deal, but the mascara one itself definitely isn't separating my lashes very well, which I don't, I don't love. So the mascara is decent. Let's be real. Oh my God. <sighs> I pulled out the teeth out of my lash comb, but you have lash brushes like this one. This is from Smashbox. See, it looks like this It's like a little fan so you can use it to apply mascara or you can use it to separate and fluff your lashes. So a decent mascara. Um, very pricey at the drugstore, but it's almost like we've come to expect those prices now, which is weird. It's weird to say, but yeah, I also picked up another mascara, which is why I'm not putting this on the other eye. So this is the Can't Stop Staring Mascara from Give by Gwen Stefani. That is a stupid name. Oh my God. Can't Stop Staring. So dumb. That is so dumb. <laughs> Somebody should have revisited that name so here's what this brush looks like this reminds me of which one was that dior what was that the dior show mascara you remember that one with the ball on the end it was all the rage in old youtube times okay everybody wanted that mascara Ooh, child it was the mascara to have and nobody knew what to do with the little ball on the end the ball on the end is supposed to help you with your outer and inner lashes. It will get to them rather than having to use the brush, the side of the brush. So that's what the ball-y tip is for, okay? You can coat those inner lashes. You see how I'm getting in there? So if the brush had more of a conical shape, I wouldn't necessarily be able to go in on those inner lashes as easily. Especially if it's a large brush, like a Better Than Sex that has a blunt edge at the top. This now allows you to go into those little spaces and apply the mascara with that ball tip. Now this brush is doing a lot better at separating the lashes so it's not clumping as much because the bristles aren't as far apart. So. It's separating the lashes a lot more, you see? And I actually think this is doing a better job than the L'Oreal one, which is fine, you know? I don't expect a ton from drugstore mascaras. They're gonna do the job, but sometimes the innovation that happens with mid-range brands and higher-end brands, yeah, it kind of just does better than drugstore, and that's fine. That's fine, but L'Oreal, they're a pretty large company that has higher end brands under their umbrella, so they can use some of their formulas and technology. Like it's not, it's not unheard of for them to do that. So this is the first mascara from Give by Gwen Stefani. She's slowly adding to her line and I wanna see what else she does. This mascara is decent. I like it. And I also like the L'Oreal one, but I prefer the Give by Gwen Stefani one. I'm gonna put lashes on probably, you know, as you do. Michaela, she taught us the way. All right, now we can go in with the foundation. So now, with the whole Michaela situation, people are calling her out, influencers are calling it out, especially like the seasoned veterans in the makeup space. Like, come on now, don't do that. But the worst thing that happened is that Jebaniah Star decided to come out his coffin with his foolishness. Talking about, oh, now I gotta come back and, and review stuff because these bitches are lying. And I'm like, ew, go back to Wyoming and this foundation is too dark. Even though I got a 10, it's a little bit too dark. And that cherry scent, cha, it is strong. Maybe it's not too dark. Maybe I could work with it, all right. So yeah, here he comes out the woodwork like capitalizing on the moment and it's kind of expected. That's what he does, right? He piggybacks on the drama. If he sees a way to get himself involved, he's gonna come running, child. So now he's saying that, oh, these influencers are lying, so it's time to get real and do the honest reviews. 
And the worst thing is, there's so many people like, Yash, Yash, Queen, come back. We missed you because we want honest reviews. Oh, you were so honest because he never accepted sponsorships because he didn't need them. He could just go ahead and do whatever videos he wanted to do, say whatever he wanted to say because he had his own money, like he owns his own brand. He didn't need to get paid by these other brands, you know? Not like everybody else that's open to sponsorships. He never accepted sponsorships, which good for him. Like, cool, cute, good for you. But he used that as a way to say other people are being dishonest because they're doing sponsorships. And that's simply not true. Just because you do a sponsorship or just because you do an ad for a company doesn't mean you're lying. Maybe there are certain things they want you to point out like their key talking points and most brands will give you key talking points if they have like a product that they're promoting. Like for instance, this L'Oreal mascara, Michaela was sure to tell you about the step one and step two and that was probably a part of her talking points that she got with her contract. They want you to point out certain things that they're using for the marketing of their product. And that's fine. It's not that you're lying because that's not a lie. Like step one, they want you to do this and step two, they want you to do that. And that's fine. That's just the directions of the mascara itself. And that's fine, right? And they'll probably tell you sometimes to mention like the benefits or special ingredients. That looks so dark. Oh my God, how many to lighten this up? Whew. But yeah, they'll give you talking points, but it's nothing crazy. Otherwise, you can just be honest with your results. And the companies that I've worked with have never had a problem with me being just upfront about my experience. And I tend to try the product out upfront before I even accept the sponsorship because I want to know if I like it first because I'm not going to lie. You know me, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you how it is because I don't care, okay? <laughs> I don't care about sponsorships. I don't care about PR, like whatever. It don't matter to me. All right. The cherry scent is very strong. It smells like, y'all remember those lip glosses in the rollerball tubes back in the day, the red rollerball tube, juicy lip glossy thing that made your lips look really juicy, but they smell really strongly of cherry. That's what this smells like, like a very artificial cherry scent. And it's very strong, but it's lingering. I can still smell it. Like some of it's on my nose, I can still smell it. So, you know, not the best, not my ideal situation. So if you don't like scented makeup, you're not gonna like this, okay? If you have a problem with scented foundation, this is, this is strong. It's not unpleasant but I don't know that I want my face to be smelling like cherry lip gloss or cherry lip balm because that's what it smells like right now. Yeah, like I can, I can smell that. I don't love it. Anyway, I have a new concealer as well. This is the Stay Naked Quickie Concealer from Urban Decay, our good friend Herbs. Herbs and their new concealer. I picked up two shades. I picked up 70 NN which is the shade I would automatically go for, but I also picked up 60 NN. So these are the neutral shades. They have different undertones, so you can get olive, golden, yellow, red. I think it's R and Y for yellow and red. So for golden undertones, you'd go with the Y, and then for um, red, you'd go with the R, right? And then neutral is N, but I think there's an olive too. Like they'll have yo which is golden undertones with some olive you know mixed in so whatever it's the same shade range as their previous concealer and their stay naked line so i picked up the shade that i had from the previous line which you know what let me go ahead and apply it right now under the eyes so yeah the crypt keeper decided that actually is a lot lighter than i expected Low-key, I thought this was gonna be my shade. Should I do the, oh, apply it here and <sniffs> foolishness. But just apply my concealer any which way. It's a very large applicator, like a doe foot applicator, but it doesn't dispense too much product because the sifter takes a lot of it off. And then you have a brush on the cap side 
that you can use. It's not a sponge. People thought it was a sponge. It's not a sponge. And you can clean this, you know, it's meant to be antimicrobial, but you can clean it too. Like, if you're using it on yourself, it's not that big a deal. Like, everybody needs to calm down, but you can still wash the actual brush on this. But it is a brush, not a sponge. Let me use a little bit of 60NN. Yeah, so the Crypt Keeper Imno is using any excuse for bringing himself back to come corrupt and pollute the situation because he stopped posting on YouTube from what I've heard and he's mainly focusing let me use the brush and see how it go he's mainly focusing on TikTok content now and him go over there want corrupt for them platform as well I am not on TikTok I don't care I would not use this little brush but it's soft it would come you know what it's not too bad it would come in the clutch if needed. It's a cute little situation. I don't think it was necessary. They could have probably lowered the price if they didn't include this little doodad, but it's fine. So him go by the people him up no figure pollute them over there. So because he is one of the reasons the beauty community saw so much controversy and drama in the past few years. And him being gone was so good for us like it was really great and now here he comes just resurrecting his little self and i'm just like leave the kids alone let them enjoy their selves over there on the clock app like it's obviously for them i know it's not excluding other generations like i know that let's be real right but i'm talking about those influencers that are over there like making waves and making you know a space for themselves it's for it started out for the younger generation and i'm just not gonna be over there he needs to leave them kids alone and let them have fun okay i'm putting a little bit of the concealer in my forehead the lighter one the 60 nn because this foundation is just a little bit too dark so i want to lighten up the center of my forehead a little bit okay concealer i like it it dries down to like a natural matte it doesn't feel dry, but it dries pretty quickly. So just work a little faster with it. Let me put some down here too. Just for lighten up the, this is not something me don't normally do, you know. But due to all, due to all the foundation kind of, it deep. My does I try to lighten up some of the face, yeah? But yeah, it dries down pretty quickly. It's more of a natural matte. It leans very matte but not like dry matte. It's one of those new age matte finishes that, should I do that? Oh, let me do all the things. It's one of those new age mattes that, yeah, it's matte and finish and that it's not going to be dewy or like too glowy, but it's not dry, right? Okay, so it's very thin, like it thins out really well, which means it mixes well with other products, so it's not gonna look too cakey. So you can layer it on without worrying about like it getting too overwhelming, which is pretty nice. And I'm actually low-key happy that I picked up that lighter shade because it did help to like lighten up some of this that's going on on my face. So like, we didn't learn our lesson about Jeffree Star. I also picked up the new Tarte Sculpt Tape. So I ordered the palette along with the Sculpt Tape and I think one more, no, two more things. So they have like a powder, which I'll do a haul. So you'll see this, a powder and a stick foundation that I picked up as well because unbeknownst to me, I had points over on Tarte that gave me like $50 off and I'm like, in addition to that, so this shade is Warm Bronze. They have a couple of shades. Here's the thing. I think I'm going to do a video um, reviewing this along with the Charlotte Tilbury um, contour one, which I never had before, but I went ahead and picked it up along with the Flower Beauty one. So we have three different price ranges. The Flower Beauty one is more on the neutral side. It's definitely more of a contour, while the Tarte one is definitely a bronzer, okay? It is warm. So look at this. This one is Flower Beauty. The orangey looking one is Tarte, okay? That's the major difference that I've found so far. From just playing with them, swatching them out, 
The packaging is pretty much almost identical for all of them. They all have that sponge applicator. That's like a little foam applicator. They all have a squeeze to plastic packaging and they all have a very similar formula. It's like a thin liquid that blends out really well. The major difference that I've seen so far are the shades. Tarte has very warm toned orangey shades. Um, the one from Charlotte Tilbury, I only picked up one shade because it's obvious that only one shade would work, which would be the deeper one. That is more on the cool tone side. And then the Flower Beauty one, also more on the cool tone side. That's the major difference so far. So if you wanted to pick one up, that would be to me the deciding factor along with the actual price point, right? So you're gonna pick whichever one up based on the price that you're comfortable with. If you wanna get the high-end one, which is Charlotte Tilbury, you wanna do the original, go for it. Or you get the mid-range brand, which is Tarte, which is not that much cheaper than the Charlotte Tilbury. Or you can get the drugstore version, which is like half the price. All right, now we're gonna go in with a new blush. I did pick up two of the new Too Faced blushes. So these are the Cloud Crush Blurring Blush. I have Tequila Sunset, which is actually a lot lighter than I thought it would be, but beautiful. Oh, I didn't even say anything about the foundation finish. It is not as glowy as I thought. Like I didn't even set it with powder yet. Y'all realize that? I didn't even set it yet. It is glowy but it's not like ultra glowy and like really shiny just yet, which I appreciate. And yeah, the smell is still there. Or is it this? This has a scent too. This is a lighter fragrance, but yeah, I can still smell the foundation. So that scent definitely lingers. This blush is so cute. It is so cute. Yas! Okay, I didn't set the foundation yet because I also picked up the powder. So this is the I Am Magic Powder Foundation. So this is an actual foundation. I'm gonna apply it very light. Lord God, Lord of mercy. I'm going to apply it very lightly. So it says, apply to your full complexion for effortless, even coverage and a natural matte look. So this is more on the matte side. Our lightweight, ultra fine powder foundation provides a soft matte finish to the skin. It effortlessly glides onto the skin for a silky, long lasting and natural look. This pressed powder is infused with ingredients that tighten, what? And shrink the appearance of large pores and excess shine, perfect for all complexions. Nothing is going to tighten and shrink, okay? What they're gonna do is mattify because let me tell you something about oily skin, which I have. I'm gonna grab the BK Beauty 109. You guys, they finally have these brushes as singles. So they extended the line, their core line, right? They'd added, I think it was like, how many new brushes? I think it was nine and they were only available in a bundle. Now you can pick them up as singles and my favorite brush from the extension is the 109. It is the baby of the 101. Look at them! The 101 is one of my favorite brushes for like contour and bronzer because of the shape, it's so awesome. Synthetic angled, soft bristles, ultra soft, really quality brushes. And now there's a little baby and the little baby is perfect for like under eye powder, blush, like bronzer, like it's so cute. So I picked this up so you can get them now as singles. I will leave them linked down below. I, hmm, let me see this concealer. I didn't even look under my eyes. Y'all, Herb's got it going on, Herb's. The concealer is beautiful. There's just slight creasing. Considering that I haven't set it, there's only very slight creasing in like my lines under my eyes, but it is beautiful. Let me turn this light. It, you can't, you know, a lot of mercy. It is beautiful. It's like such a, ooh, it's such a pretty finish. This is nice. I do like, I do like this concealer. Jamaicans, why do we call it Mata? Mm? Eye boogers, like why we call it Mata? Take out the Mata out there. eye. Why? <laughs> why do we call it Mata? Like that not even make no sense. Mata, take out the Mata out your eye, child. Let me set under my eyes really quickly with some La Prairie powder. 
I always open now when I do mash it up, I mash up the powder to <sighs> Lord of mercy, I did mash it up for true. Let me get a little bit. I've had this powder for so many years, guys. Oh my god. So let me just slightly dab this under the eyes. The one size powder I have found is just a little bit too light right now on this tan skin. It can look very stark. Like if I set under my eyes, I can see where it starts and where it ends. So I'm using the La Prairie powder instead. They have reformulated that powder like probably multiple times by now, but I still have the old one and she still works. So I'm going to still use her. So for the powder from Juvia's Place, I picked up Burkina and this is, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's also a sponge like underneath the thing. Um, um, this shade is a little bit orange, like the shades are hard to decipher in this powder and in the foundation. And I didn't have good testers in store for me to try out either. So like I said, I just kind of eyeballed it and I'm just hoping for the best, but I'm hoping it is a lightweight powder, right? And I'm using my Kabuki brush from Smashbox, which is a all over brush. So it should give me a more diffused finish. So that looks fantastic. That looks fantastic. Touching this powder is very soft. It's very silky. It's very nice. But, oh my god, that is so nice. I'm going to try this as just a powder foundation on its own one day. But I'm a liquid foundation kind of girl. That is so pretty. What? Oh my god, that is so pretty. I keep wiping my nose ring because it's getting covered in product and I need it to shine. Child, my nose ring done fell out my nose last night. Matilda said I'm going to sleep early, right? So I'm going to go sleep early, you know, <laughs> and I was face down ass up sleeping. Okay. And my nose ring flew all the way out. And yeah, so I had to replace it. Now I had like a nose ring issue on vacation. I'm going back over with some of the blush, not a lot, just a little bit to brighten it up. Cause I did cover it with the powder just now, but I did, um, have like a swollen irritated nose for the majority of the vacation because my nose ring was bent too sharply like it was too high up where it was bent and my nose where it's pierced is kind of chubby so i need to just bend it very <laughs> i'm giving you a lot of information but these are things you need to know about nose rings if you're gonna get your nose pierced i didn't know this okay so my nose that cartilage right here is thick okay so if I'm putting a stud in, I have to get the extended one or the longer stems because the short ones, like the average size won't go far in. Like it's gonna, it's not even gonna have enough for me to bend it because the whole thing is you're supposed to bend it to hold the ring in place or to hold the stud in place. So I have to get like the long stem ones, right? And I get the 14 karat gold and then I have to bend it but my nose was so irritated and swollen around that area. So even the long stem was hard to bend. So the bend that I did have in it was almost like squeezing the nose, which was making it even more irritated. Whole situation, my nose hurt the whole time, but I came home, changed it, and I didn't tighten it, like bend it really sharply. And because of that, it was kind of loose and it fell out while I was sleeping. Let me just do a little mascara down here. I wasn't going to do, am I, am I going to do anything crazy down here? No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it like this because like I said, I think I'm going to probably wash my face. I'm going to film my haul video right now and finish up this video. And then I, yeah, I think I'm going to wash my face. I don't feel like wearing this much makeup. It doesn't feel heavy or crazy. I just don't feel like wearing makeup tonight. I... Don't wear a ton of makeup all the time anymore. I like to just go fresh face. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me go do this. Oh, I need a lip color too. Yeah, let me just talk y'all talk to y'all while I go do a lip color. What color should I use? I picked up a few. Ooh, 
I'm gonna put lashes on too, but I'll put lashes on off camera. So the Crypt Keeper, like I was mentioning, decided he wants to rear his ugly head and here he come now trying to just capitalize on somebody else's downfall because everybody's like talking about Michaela. I don't think she's, mm -mm, it, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal for her. I don't think it's going to like cancel her or anything. It's not a cancelable offense. It's not... Like I said, it's it's not that serious in the grand scheme of things. It's just something that needs to be called out and she needs to be held accountable. Point back, period. Like, you know what I mean? But he comes rearing his ugly head, calling her out, and I'm like, go away, go away. But here he comes again. I just hope no one lets him back in the club. But I don't know. I don't know, child. People have done crazier things and they're so thirsty for him. And I'm like, did we forget that this guy is like a whole situation? Like he's a whole problem. Y'all just so thirsty for him to come back. Like, have we not learned? Have we not taught you anything? Like, did we not walk so you can run? Like the YouTubers, the OGs all walked so you could run and look at you now doing foolishness. Like, you know what? I'm gonna let y'all crash and burn. Just let y'all learn. My brother told me this too. Sometimes, some people just gotta learn on their own. You can't tell them, right? If you tell them, they're not gonna take it to heart. They just gotta experience it themselves to fully learn the lesson. So let them crash and burn. I can't be bothered. But, but these kids are quick, okay? Because we didn't learn until later on on YouTube about certain things you know, that these influencers are doing. But the this new generation, they are quick and they don't play, okay? They are quick to move people along. So I have no doubt that they're gonna be fine, okay? They're gonna be fine. This is one of the new Hourglass um, lipsticks. These are the Unlocked, or is that what they're called? The Unlocked Satin Cream Lipsticks. The shade I just applied was Alpine. This is number 304. It's like a lighter nude shade. It's more on the, hmm, would you say it? It's a, mm, it has a little peachy hint to it. It's cute, she's cute. And let me grab a lip liner. Let me use dark chocolate from Makeup by Mario just to give a little, you know, a little definition. What is it, glazed brownie lip? Shut up, shut up. Who is that chick? Um. Justin Bieber's wife, what's her name? Haley Bieber, talking about glaze this and glaze. She ain't do nothing glaze, mm, mm She is not the founder of the glazed lip trend. Like, come on. Black girls been doing the dark outline with the glossy lip, like, don't do that. Do not do that, like, they... Anyway, we're not getting at that. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Catching you guys up on some foolishness. It's cute. Mm -hmm. These lipsticks are expensive, but they are cute. They are cute. They are very moisturizing, very lightweight. They feel very comfortable. I picked up a few shades. This is a cute color for this type of lip, right? <laughs> this is not the type of lip that I would normally do though. Let's be real. Let's be realistic, Tina. You don't do this kind of lip necessarily. I don't. I really don't. All right, I popped on my lashes and you know what? I think I'm gonna go in with a little bit of dark brown liner on my waterline. This is Coco from Victoria Beckham. So creamy, so pigmented. Yas, I don't wanna do black. Yeah, I think that's good. And I'm going to go in with a little bit of lip gloss just to tie everything together. This is a beautiful brown lip oil. It's not a lip gloss. It is the Amicole Lip Treatment Oil in the shade. It don't say, but it's the brown shade. Mm-hmm. That, yes, that's gonna bring all of it together so it's not as light of a lip. Yeah, this is more me, right? 
this is definitely more me. So there you have it. This is the final look. And I didn't know what to expect because everything, pretty much everything I used is new. And I am loving it. Now I'm thinking that I might not wash this off. It is so pretty right now. What? It is so pretty. The foundation is a little bit dark. Ain't gonna lie. But let's run through the products that we used. All right. Let's start with the Dior primer. This, I don't know if it's what's keeping me kind of matte right now. So this foundation isn't looking super glowy. But it felt nice going on. It's very lightweight. It didn't feel dry. It didn't tighten up my skin. I don't know that it necessarily filled in pores, but my pores are not emphasized at all right now. Like, y'all, no filter, nothing going on other than the makeup that I put on. And this, like, is looking good. And I don't know if that's because of the primer, because it's the first time I'm using the primer. But it's beautiful. So I'm going to use this some more to see if it works with other foundations. I did try it with the Makeup by Mario foundation that I also picked up. It didn't help this stay any more matte. This foundation is just dewy city, but this looks good. So I like how this primer felt. I like that it doesn't feel like silicone. It, it didn't feel heavyweight. It didn't feel slippery. It just absorbed into my skin without like drying out my skin. It's almost like milk of magnesia in a primer. So I'm loving this. I really like this. The foundation, I can still smell this, but it looks beautiful. Oh my God. It looks so good that I low-key want to go try to see if I can get a lighter shade because this shade is just way too dark. It's way too dark. I do need a lighter shade. Even with my tan, it's just way too rich on my skin. But I kind of love it. I kind of love how it applied, how it blended. It feels nice. It looks beautiful. It's not too glowy at all. I just don't love the smell of it. It's really strong, but I like it enough that I am going to get a lighter shade and try it out some more. But that smell, if you are opposed to scent in your makeup, you're not gonna like it because it has not faded. I can still smell it. It's not as strong. It did fade a little bit. Let's, all right, let's be fair. It did fade a little bit, but I can still smell it, which after all this time, I should not still be smelling it. So definitely taking off points for that, but it looks really great. And then what else did we try? The concealer, herbs, herbs, little Urban Decay coming through with the concealer. I really like this concealer. I truly like it. I like the finish. I like how lightweight it is. It's very thin, all right? So it like, it just blends out easily without looking cakey or heavy, doesn't feel heavy, but it kind of blurred my skin a bit and it has that matte finish without it being like a flat, dry, chalky matte. It's like a natural matte, but it's not like a satin matte at all. It's more like a true, true matte. Yeah, there's no shine at all. Doesn't feel tight or dry again, but I have oily skin. So it works for me. Maybe dry skin, you may be a little bit apprehensive. I can't speak to how it will feel on dry skin, but for me, Yes, and you got a lot of product in here. You get 0.55 fluid ounce, which is more than half the size of a typical foundation. So loving the concealer, the powder. I'm also liking this powder foundation from Juvia's Place. I think this shade is okay. I do probably have to go light handed with it because it is a little bit more on the peachy side. Every time I hold up a product, like my lighting changes, but I really do like this powder. I think it looks great on my skin. Do I need to adjust? Is that a little better? I hope so. I really do like how the powder looks on my skin. It looks really, really good. And I like the finish of it. It's not heavy or cakey. Like my face right now looks really beat. Like what? I look low-key flawless as hell i really like this i really really like this powder and then even the little bronzer situation that we had going on 
with the sculpt tape and the flower beauty one where is it my desk is a mess right now I picked up two shades of the Flower Beauty one. So which one did I use? I think I used the deep one and I used the warm bronze from Tarte. These are really beautiful as well. It's my window, hold up. That should be better now, but these worked out really well. I kind of prefer the Flower Beauty shade though because it's more of that neutral tone versus this really orangey one from Tarte. But again, like I said, the formulations are very similar, the price points are different, and the shades are very different. So let those be your deciding factors. I think they kind of both perform the same way. They blend it out the same way, and they look really great on the skin. Really loving that. And the blush from Too Faced, it is still there. And that is a testament to the longevity, okay? Some blushes would fade away by now, like after about an hour of wear on my oily skin, it'd be gone, right? But it's still there and it's a subtle, beautiful color and it's blurring my skin a little bit. The finish is really outstanding. I really like this, but the shade is not like in your face, like punchy. It's not like intensely pigmented, which I'm fine with. This is a beautiful color. I really like this. The lips, my lip liner is from Makeup by Maria, already love that. The lipstick from Hourglass, I have other shades, but this particular shade is a light one. I think if you like the light inner lip with the darker liner, you would really like that. That's not necessarily a look that I go for, but like I said, I have other shades and I think the formula is really comfortable. It feels really buttery and creamy on the lips, but it's not heavy. You know how some creamy lipsticks that have all these butters in them, they can feel kind of thick? This feels very lightweight and comfortable and it doesn't look like an opaque lacquer on your lips. So I really do like the formulation and it's very comfortable. So I love that. And then the lip gloss, this Amicale. So what I'm gonna do is actually review this brand. It's a brand new black owned brand at Sephora. I picked this gloss up because it popped up in my feet and I think I'm gonna grab some more products from the line to review them because I think, mm, I have not had like a brown gloss that's more on the sheer side. This is not a gloss. Let me stop calling it a gloss. It's a lip oil, but I haven't seen like a brown one like this. No, that's a lie. That's a lie because Dior has one, right? Dior does have one, so I take that back. But I love a brown gloss because I love doing that kind of glazed wet lip. And my lips kind of have a natural darker outline anyway. So just popping on like a light tinted lip oil like this or a clear gloss is gonna give me that glazed effect. And this is really beautiful and I love how it looks. Juicy, right? Mm, loving it. What else did we try? The palette, the eyeshadow palette. How could we forget? She is cute. This eyeshadow look is cute. Don't expect really shiny, like metallic eyeshadow, but if you go for the more subtle, like baked formulas, like I do like a subtle frost, then you will love this. These eyeshadows applied well, blended out really great, like, what? And your finger will intensify them or you can apply them with a damp brush and you can see that they haven't faded at all. They haven't dulled down. Do you love that I can do that? Yeah, I'm doing the Katy Perry like the broken doll look. Anyway, <laughs> the eyeshadow. Stunning. Loving it. The mascaras. All right. That sun really came in and like messed up my lighting. All right. Hopefully this is better now. But yeah, the mascaras, I prefer the Give by Gwen Stefani because it separates a little bit more. I'm wearing lashes. I don't know why I'm touching my lashes right now as if I'm not wearing. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm not Michaela, okay? The Give by Gwen Stefani just separated my lashes a little bit better but I do also like the L'Oreal, so it's not a bad mascara to pick up. I really like how richly black it is in Blackest Black. This is a good formula. I would probably use this more as a layer in mascara and use one of my mascaras with a fiber type brush to separate the lashes after, which I do like layer in mascaras. It's something that I tend to do anyway, so that's not a big deal, but using it alone, you're gonna probably need to use a separating brush or comb to like 
you know, separate the clumps. But it's a decent little mascara. It's a little bit pricey for the drugstore though, so it's not like you're saving that much getting the drugstore mascara anymore, but yeah. She's cute. I do like her. What else did we use? That's it. That's it. That's new. So there you have it. This is the finished look. I am looking really washed out right now. And I don't know. Yeah, I think that that helped a little bit. Like I'm like moving lights and everything. But there you have it. This is the final look absolutely loving it and like with the big hoops and the sweater like who am i like who am i this is 40 guys this is 40 and i am loving it i can't wait to share more videos with you guys i've been really enjoying filming lately i've like gotten my groove back just being very low-key with my content like not overthinking it not pressuring myself just having fun with it and yeah, that means I can film more and get more out. Plus, I have a new computer that is really helping with the editing. So that also makes me feel a little bit more productive. So you're going to see more content from me. If you want to already subscribe, like hit the subscribe button. I mean, if you made it this far in the video, you're probably already subscribed. I'm going to go ahead and leave all the products that I use in the description box down below, along with links on where you can pick them up. If those links have an asterisk next to them, that means that they are affiliate links. That means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. Hey, you see that disclosure that I'm doing? Yeah, that's how you disclose, right? So if you make a purchase through those links, I will make a small sales commission. If you're not comfortable with that, just shop the way you normally shop. No must, no fuss. I'm still happy you're here watching. You can also now join my membership on my channel, which is just a tip jar. I'm not gonna have special content for for you guys but it does give you special emojis that you can use in your comments if that helps that's a perk but it's just a tip jar if you wanted to leave me a little bit extra because you like my content feel free to hit the join button it's on my channel page so if you just click over to my channel page you'll see a join button that you can hit to join I also have super thanks which should be linked down below there should be a button that you can click also treating that like a tip jar but other than that, follow me on my Instagram and Twitter where we have fun, we yak it up, we have a good time. I didn't mean to say yak to remind you guys of Jebaniah Star, but mm, we have a good time over there on Twitter and Instagram. So follow me along and until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.